Hi guys, and welcome to my Berkeley Lit Room. Today, we will be discussing Hyrule Warriors! So, Hyrule Warriors is basically a beat-em-up using the characters from the Legend of Zelda series. Yay! Now, I love the Legend of Zelda series, specifically for the characters in it, so it, it's cool by me that it's not the exact same as the rest playstyle-wise. It's, it's meant to be different. I don't want it to be the same, otherwise it wouldn't be the game that it's going to be. I would like you guys to note that in this video there will be spoilers for the Legend of Zelda series. Um, also, take nothing from this as fact. These are based on things that I've heard, mostly from Zelda and Formula, and then my opinions mixed with them. So none of this is fact, don't quote me on it. Okay, so apparently there are going to be some characters that are only playable within certain areas. For me, this means that it's likely that Midna will only be playable within Twilight. This makes sense for her character, so while I'm sad that I won't be able to play her whenever, whatever level I want, I I'm quite happy that it's like that because it just makes sense. She's not a creature of the light. She's the princess of the twilight. That's where she needs to be. Fair be it. Also, no, nobody's actually said that Midna's definitely only going to be playable within certain areas. That's my idea from it. The fact that I can't play Midna anywhere gives me a chance to learn about other characters, like Lana, who is a player who is a new character for this game. Now, Lana, aka the White Witch, is looking for these things called... Is it the Gate of Souls? I think it's the Gate of Souls. Is looking for these things called the Gate of Souls. And she saves Agatha, you know, Princess Agatha from Twilight Princess. And so Agatha helps her, and thus joining Hyrule Warriors, the game. So there's another two characters that we have for the game. So I mean, I don't really know much about Lana except for the fact that she uses magic and that kind of means that I'm likely to want to play as her because I like magic users. Speaking of magic, Queen Zelda. Finally she got rebranded from princess to queen. Now, to me it doesn't really 100% matter whether she's called queen or princess as long as she's still Zelda. But I still think it's a positive mood because Queen uh, well, the reason that they, I think they avoid you saying Queen is because people associate Queen with being old. Or maybe even evil if you're in Disney. But, um, no. The Queen, to me, denotes wisdom and respect. And the fact that they've given that to Zelda is hugely positive. And it moves away from the idea of princess being helpless, need to be rescued, rescue the princess kind of thing. Saying that, Zelda, even as a princess, has never actually been really helpless. I mean, e like, I mean, I haven't played all the games, but even from Ocarina of Time, she helped you fight Ganon as much as a non-playable character at the time could without getting in the way. Let's face it, you can't base that off new games, and the idea isn't necessarily for her to fight Ganon, but for her to help you, because she's not necessarily a fighter. Now, that is different in these games, because she's obviously fighting. She is a playable character. Yay! As far as I can tell, Zelda uses a mixture of sword and magic, and that's a really nice balance, I think. I think it's important to have some characters that do do that, because, I mean, you see her in the videos using her sword, and then you see her using, like, a magic arrow, and I think all the characters can use items from the game, but Zelda seems to have a mixture of magic and, you know, physical ability there. Now, speaking of the physical side of the fight, we have a favourite here. We have Impa. She protected Zelda when she was chic. Impa was pictured as old in um, Skyward Sword because she'd been waiting, she'd been a protector there as well. Impa is generally seen as a protector, and she is a woman. And she has these massive physical skills, deliberate sword swings, and she is a strong character and I want to thank Nintendo for actually creating a strong character who's not like... I don't know if you've noticed but strong female characters that are you know, physically strong tend to not as attractive as the other ones and I wouldn't say that that's the same for Impa. They haven't said that she can't be anything else because she's strong. This is why I like Nintendo. It attributes are based on the person's character rather than their gender or their sex. So Impa is strong because she's strong. She's not less strong than Link because she's a girl, for example. She uses different style to Link, but it's still physical. And that is character-based, not sex-based. Speaking of personality, we can't miss out 
Sia here. Is that how you pronounce the name? Sia Kia? She is again a new character. Sia starts off, she's a good person, she's there to balance the Triforce, but she falls in love with Link and gets really jealous of Princess Zelda, Queen Zelda, sorry, Queen Zelda, and then turns a little bit corrupt and evil and becomes an enemy. Mm. Now, I'm not calling Nintendo sexist here because I actually believe that they are one of the best companies for not being sexist and for, for having respect for women in their games and they're just attitude towards female characters in general um, but I'm a little bit sad at this cliche and I'll explain a bit more later on as to why this specifically makes me sad because usually I wouldn't take a storyline as being necessarily against females but it links into something I'm going to talk about later in that that kind of storyline isn't given to males unless it's gonna have a bit of comedy in there. Anyway, discussion about Sia doesn't end there, that's just the background. People have questioned her quite sexual and sensual appearance. For me, this isn't a problem. Nintendo are excellent with variety. Some people are just more sensual than others. I mean, if all female characters were like Sia, then yes, I would complain, but they're not. I mean, let's look. Impa, not sexualized, strong. Zelda, pretty, yes but not sexualized, not by Nintendo anyway, you fanfiction people. You're meant to respect Zelda, you're not meant to just think, oh look at her body, yay, you're meant to respect her. Hell, Midna's naked, but the only sexualization about her comes from people's fanfics and pictures and fan art. She's naked, but she's not meant to be a sexual creature. So, yes, see ya, she is sexual. But I mean, am I a sexual being? Not really. Is someone else walking along the street, are they could they be a sexual creature? Yes, because we're different. And that doesn't mean that either of us are wrong. So Nintendo has embraced variety there. They haven't said all females are sexual and they haven't said all females are non-sexual. People are people. It happens and you can't deny the fact that sexual people exist and just not have them in games. And let's face it, the audience for Zelda games are growing up, so to me, Sia does not represent sexism in the way that she looks. Now, I know that people have actually argued that her sexuality and sexuality reflect her personality and her character, which is again fine. Um, I do have the link of the article I'm talking about below, but I couldn't find the comment that actually mentioned this because I read it a long time ago and it just kind of stuck with me. But basically, the argument was that Sia, she hides her face, she has a mask, but her body is very much on show. And she's a very tricksy character, so the idea that a lot of her, her voluptuous, gorgeous body is on show is the fact that she wants to distract people she's fighting. And let's face it, it would, it would distract you. So the idea about her being semi-naked is more about her personality than it is about her being naked. So you may have noticed so far we've only spoken about female characters. Well that's because Link is the only male character that has, as far as this recording goes, has been announced. Now we know he's going to be a playable character because it wouldn't make sense for him not to be. Link was designed to be a link between the player and the world of Hyrule and it wouldn't make sense to take him out. Plus he has that nifty new scarf and it would just be wasted if he wasn't in the game so yeah he's, he's in the game. There's nothing really interesting you can say about Link, he'll probably have a similar fighting style. You know, it'd be a bit bigger because that's the idea of Hyrule Warriors, everything's a bit more emphasized in the fighting wise. There's not that much interesting to say about Link other than he is the only male. Now I do have to say, at this point, that Hyrule Warriors has been criticized so far because there haven't really been any other male characters announced. And I actually really love this because at this point in any other game, if it would be mostly male characters announced, only one female character, there, yes, there would be a lot of talk from women about sexism, but nobody would take them seriously because for some reason people don't take women seriously when they complain about se you know sexism. I don't know why, I think that's rubbish, but I don't believe it's sexist. I think the fact that Nintendo have only announced female characters so far, really, is because of strategy. It gets some attention, it really, really emphasises the fact that they have a good showing of female characters. So you remember that um, in an earlier video, I stated that only 15% of game characters, playable game characters, are female. Well, there seems to be a lot more than 15% here right now, doesn't there? So, uh, Nintendo, I think you're doing good here. Saying that, I do not think that they're not going to announce any male characters. They will announce male characters. Now, popular 
character that I've seen people ask for in comments is Groose. So Groose seems to have been, seems to have hit something within people. And why not? He has cool hair, you saw a lot of character development in him, he's a funny guy. He would definitely be the, you know, some brawn, he would definitely be a physical attacker. He is essentially the opposite of Seer. So he had a crush on Zelda and he was jealous of Link, which turned him into a bit of a bully. But instead of turning evil and jealous like a woman, he really stepped up to try and impress Zelda and to discover himself. This is why I have an issue with Sia's storyline, because when Groose was jealous, it was funny. When she was jealous, it was serious, like batshit crazy, she went evil. And I don't think Nintendo did that on purpose, I don't think they did it to be sexist, but it is just typical. It is just typical of the society that that kind of thing is funny when it's guys, but not when it's females. So I'll be interested to see the videos of it when it comes out, you know, the um, cutscenes, to see if they had any humour for Sia, because otherwise it's just typical, so typical. Okay, it would be nice to see a male magic user, because Link's not a magic user, if Groose comes out, he's not a magic user. Maybe Prince Rallis. I don't know. He's he's the Zora, the, the ill Zora prince that you save in um, Twilight Princess. I don't know if he uses magic. He's a Zora. Zora seems magical to me. But speaking of possibilities, Zant is an enemy in a game, which makes sense because Min is in it. Game Informer, and I'll put the link below, have kind of... They've decided that just because he starts out as an enemy doesn't mean he'll become a playable character. You know, that's good because it adds, again, variety, you're not just playing good guys. People, some people really like to play as the bad guys. Um, also, Zant is a male magic user, so yay, I would get what I wanted. And it would probably be a little bit less obscure than Prince Rallis, let's face it. And finally, I am going to talk about Fee. Now, I have accidentally split this up into a male and female section just because Link ended up being the least interesting character that I was going to be talking about. Um, but kind of while like double checking the links, I kind of noticed that they'd announced Fee yesterday. And by this point I'd already written out like most of it and then I couldn't quite fit her in properly. But Fee, she's the spirit, she's a representation of the goddess sword. And she's a representation, but that, does that actually make her female? Is she androgynous? Is she female? Is she not? You know, one say nothing. Is she neither? Um, it's just something to think about. I don't know, it's my excuse for putting her in her own section, I guess. Anyway, it pretty much said Fee doesn't need a weapon, she is part of a weapon, she is a weapon in herself, and if you watch her gameplay, you can totally see that. She moves so beautifully, it's almost like she's at a dance recital and all the enemies are just getting in her way and they're just getting hit and hurt just because they're in her way and she's not trying to hurt them. But when the audience gets a little bit too crowded, she turns into a sword and she can hit them all the way, so yay! She is cool. Sadly, this game has a maximum of two players. I would have liked to have seen it be a bit more multiplayer, um, you know. Sadly, games are now shying away from the idea of split screen, and I love playing split screen games with my brother. And I can understand how you might want a full screen for this because it, you know, the moves they take up so much space. And I can see how two player works, but even if you couldn't have four player by dividing the screen into three and having the tablet, you could probably still have three player. Even you have the tablet, and then you have split screen going horizontal. That would work, I think. I am excited for Hyrule, for Hyrule Warriors. Because they're showing a huge diversity in characters. The, they're brave enough to move away from the traditional games. Yes, I believe that more male characters will be announced. I do think that Nintendo have announced it in this way for a reason. Saying that, one could suggest that the fact that they've only announced females so far to get attention could be seen as exploiting females, but however, I, I I personally don't believe this. It's just a view that one could take. And I really don't believe that this is Nintendo's intent. Maybe if all the characters were dressed like Sia, I would call it sexist. Maybe if Link is the only male character, and at the end of the game all the female characters fight over him, then yes, I would call it sexist. Although Link, everyone has a crush on Link in the games. Anyway, I'm, I'm saying to those people who think that it is exploiting the fact that you know, they're showing women first. Just give Nintendo the benefit of the doubt. Don't be so sensitive about that. 
issue because they are still the best company out there I think for respecting women and for having a variety within women and um, in my opinion they're doing more good than they are bad so there we go those are my thoughts thus far on Hyrule Warriors it's a bit too far away from release date which is sad I can't wait to play it what about you guys have I missed anything that you wanted me to talk about do you disagree with anything I've said? Maybe you think that Midna will be playable everywhere and that Lana will only be playable in some places or maybe you hate the idea that Hyrule Warriors is going to be different to the rest of the Zelda games. Do you disagree with me about Sia? Do you know how to pronounce Sia's name? Do you know anything more about the Gate of Souls? Just any information, anything that you want to give me, just comment below. Thank you.